a WPC 89 driver board that blew the five volt fuse as soon as I powered it on. So let's figure out why. This is BR2, it's bridge rectifier two, and it rectifies the AC coming in on one of the, on this connector. <clears throat> you can see, even see the trace. And this is the source of the five volt power, which gets filtered by C5 at this location. So I've got my meter set to diode check, black on the oddball leg, I call it. And let's see, this is charging a cap. Let's get it, let's let it go and see what happens. So that is fully charged up and that leg is okay. Move over here and we have a good reading. Here we have a good reading, but here we have a short. So this cap is going to need to come out. So let's do that. Step one is to remove this number 10 screw from both the cap you're taking out and BR1. And you could hear the heat sink drop out. Let me get those screws out of there. Nice. Here's our screws, here's our heat sink. We'll set that aside. Sorry for all this flipping around. This is the shorted bridge rectifier. So we're just gonna creep underneath here and cut the legs right off of that devil. Excellent. And this is no good. It's going in the trash can. Got my iron heated up. Fortunately, nobody's molested this bridge rectifier in the past. And I'm gonna heat up each of these legs individually and just pull the leg out. This procedure or this method of this procedure guarantees that you're not gonna tear any through holes. I see a lot of guys with their Hako 808 or whatever's the current one. And they'll try to pull the solder out of there before you remove the bridge rectifier. And it's just not a good way to go. Now I do have my Hako 808. And I'm going to use it to clean up these holes. That one didn't clean up very well. Because there's a lot of solder. Uh, heat sink on the back of that, but we did get two of them. So let's flip it over and get the other two. You can see how much heat mass, thermal mass there was there. And clean up this one too. So you can see that we've gotten those holes nice and clean. We haven't molested this fine trace that eventually goes to the general illumination circuit here and here. Want this leg and this leg feed the GI circuit. So let me get another bridge rectifier. I'll be back. New bridge for my parts supply and some super lube. And I like to uh, put a little bit on the top of the new bridge. And you don't need to go crazy with this stuff. A little dab will do you, as we used to say. Maybe got a little too much on there. And then uh, I put it on top of the old bridge because the old uh, heat transfer paste is worn out. And then we will screw the new bridge to the heat sink. See if I can get that aligned, the holes aligned. Whoops. There we go. The legs aligned with where they'll go through the holes. Then I'm gonna apply the assembly back to the board. I haven't done anything with BR1 yet. We don't wanna do anything with BR1 yet and we don't want to solder BR2 into place yet. So I have um, 
put the assembly back in the board. I'm going to flip it over so I can reinstall the screw onto the BR1. And what this does by doing it in this order of operations is it guarantees that the top of the of BR1 and the top of BR2 are in the same plane. Because you don't want to fracture the solder joints by soldering them first and then screwing the new bridge down. So I've got both screws tightened up and now we are going to just solder BR2 in place. So get yourself some solder, apply, and once the solder is fully molten into a nice solder meniscus, you just drag the iron up the leg and you've got a nice solder joint. Last thing to do is to let the solder cool. And some people will clip the legs before uh, they apply the solder. I don't know if it makes much difference, but what you want to make sure you do is you don't trim down into the solder meniscus. So I just raised my side cutters up just a little bit and you've got a little bit of leg still sticking out way above the solder meniscus or the solder volcano. Check out the other side. Looks good. Let's go to the test rig now and see if it works. You gotta remember to change the blown fuse. This goes five amp, seven amp, five amp, eight amp, normal blow. Now somebody else has been in here and replaced all these capacitors, these 15,000 microfarad caps with these big ass ugly super tower caps. I hate these things, but if, if it works, I leave it. There's no sense in replacing good parts with new parts.